this is a topic uh, of my session, which is the next, or what we think is going to be, you know, the next breakthrough in enterprise uh, BR. Okay, so first of all, um, I would like to introduce what Virtual World, why Virtual World is talking about this, and maybe we have some kind of expertise uh, of this, of the use of this immersive technology to say this kind of things. Okay, we've been 15 years in the market. Uh, we were born for the enterprise, so we've been developing custom solutions for enterprises since 2004. Uh, we started with the real estate and construction industry, then we moved to tourism and heritage, then in 2010 we created two business units, one for corporate training and another one for health, and in 2014 with this industry 4.0 concept, then we enter the industry. So we mainly develop custom solutions to boost businesses. As we think, we need to be really close to the industry. We are also part of different associations worldwide, in this case with the Aerospace Defense and Security Association or the Museums Association of the UK. We are also part of the VR AR Association, uh, where it's based in San Francisco and well, they have different chapters worldwide. Actually, I'm the co-chair of the Enterprise Committee. There are different committees where we discuss, you know, use case, which is the future, how, you know, companies and developers can be involved so they can spread the use of this technology and the benefits in the industry. And actually, well, we were nominated for the VR Awards with our approach in the, what we think is the next breakthrough in Enterprise VR. We are 60 people worldwide. Our headquarters are in the Basque Country in Spain. Uh, we have people certified from uh, Unity and actually well, part of the team were invited to the last Unite. Okay, so we mainly developed our custom solutions in Unity and we are here too. We have four offices based in the north of Spain and then we have commercial office in the UK, Toronto and uh, Mexico. So, the next week through in Enterprise VR, it's about scaling. Okay, I think that the room scan area, it's over. Now we can talk about large scale, warehouse scale, you know, bigger spaces where we can interact in a virtual reality environment. It has to do with this, okay? Imagine you are designing, you know, a new airplane, okay? And you have, you have this space. For instance, why don't you have, you know, a one-to-one -one virtual airplane and you can move freely Okay, like you normally do, instead of being the old time, you know, teletransporting all the time, maybe sometimes you don't know where you are. Okay, that's the idea. Multi-user, you know, the area of mono-user, one-user in VR, it's over to, you know, uh, for engineering design, for training, you need more than one people involved, and sometimes you need like 10, 50, a lot of people involved. So it's going to be multi-user. And the last thing, free roam, okay? Uh, we have the caves, concept, VR. Maybe you can say it's a bit of large scale, let's see, well, more or less. Multi-user, whether well, it's one guy guiding and the other people watching, but it's not free roam. Free roam means that you move freely in that space, okay? And this kind of concept is the same concept, for instance, that zero latency or the void have for the entertainment, but bring to the enterprise. And this is our approach. What you've seen there is our immersive room approach. Okay, it's a large scale, warehouse scale, multi-user free room solution. It is based on the equipment, okay, we have a proprietary tracking system which is boundless, no limitations in terms of space and in terms of users. You have some ceiling panels and then a tracker that you put on top of your headset. Then we have integrated it with Oculus and we are now integrating it with HP Reverb and then you have your backpack. So you have the power and this tracking technology allow us to have no limitations. And on the other part, this whole solution comes with a platform, video platform for room management. In mind, you know, I have to install every time I need to, you know, to execute a file, install it in 
every PC that I have. Uh, how are the batteries? Okay. How is the ceiling, that ceiling panel? And so on. No, you can manage everything from that platform. And the most important thing, you can deploy your content. I mean, if you are a developer that you create content, you can deploy your content via an X file using the video platform in that multi-user solution. It is based in Unity. And if you develop your content in Unity, you can easily deploy your content in a multi-user way in that infrastructure. Why? Because that video platform allows you or give you access to the API or the SDK or the tracking system so you can develop and create large-scale multi-user solutions. So coming back for what we think is the next breakthrough in enterprise we are. It should be an enterprise ready. I mean, uh, I buy it, uh, I train, I have a training about it, and in three, four days, I have it running. Okay, ready for the day-to-day -day work of professionals. Okay, it's like, okay, if you buy something and you take like one month to get it ready and to integrate it in your processes, that is not going to work. You're gonna say, okay, I don't, I don't care, I don't like it. So it should be enterprise ready, okay, for professionals' day-to-day -day work. It has to be affordable. Actually, I was mentioning uh, before we mark, uh, I saw a pool about uh, the Augmented Reality Enterprise Association that uh, they did in Twitter, and one of the main things for Augmented Reality hardware was affordability. Okay, it should be affordable. Okay, I mean, for instance, uh, in our main competitor in the tracking system, it's 50% more expensive than we are, okay? And also affordable in terms not only on investment, but also in the part of the operational, okay, maintenance. It should be easy to maintain. For instance, caves uh, are not quite easy to maintain, and a bit expensive in regards to maintenance. And the last thing, I think it's the most important thing, simple. Simple to use, simple to deploy content, simple to interact with the content, so these are what we think are the main three things the next breakthrough in virtual reality should have. And for instance, this is a video how you can deploy content using the video platform using a CAD file from the any 3D authoring tool. This is the CAD file and the 3D authoring tool. You import it in Unity. Then you have it in Unity, okay? Maybe you can do, you have the knowledge, you can change, do some kind of modifications. You export, you export it to the video platform. Here in the platform, you can import the whole scene from Unity 3D or an X file. There you have it, launch. And enjoy. This is real footage of our uh, facilities, our headquarters that we have uh, 100 square meters uh, in Mason room. And this is our CTO, just, you know, testing. So for engineering design, for that review process, for training. For instance, we are using live motion for hand tracking in this case, natural interaction. The menu, you have the menu as you see on your hand, when you open your hand. And there are these kind of things, you can configure them inside Vero. So here you can have the same time, the same planes, the design department, engineering, your client, you know, part of other departments, experience in it. Easy, right?
Bye bye. Okay, so what do we offer then? That's our approach. What do we offer in this case? Well, custom installation of the machine room. Okay, depending on the size you need, depending on the number of users, we provide you know the the equipment, tracking technology, headsets, and whatever, all the setup. Then the video platform, so you can deploy your own content. Maybe you have an in-house team that develops in Unity, so you can deploy your own content with video platform. Or maybe you have all the providers that create their content Unity using Unity 3D. They can be deployed using the video platform in this case. And then content development. Okay, these are one of the three uh, legs. We develop custom content. For you can we can also develop custom content in this case, or custom modules inside Vero. I mean, maybe you have a training pill uh, for training people. You are, you know, uh, saving different information from the different users, and you would like to have that information in Vero platform. Well, we can create that module for you, so you can have all the information in the platform in this case. So. I love this. This, I think, this is the most important part. Okay, talking about uh, our approach, and this, I'm going to talk to you about a use case. This is uh, well, the process that appears in one of the Price Waterhouse Cooper's study: how to develop a virtual reality or immersive application. And that's it's actually what we've been doing during a long uh, way. The first thing, first step, first thing, discover the technology and the potential of the technology. In this case, we'll discover the potential of virtual reality to improve processes, to improve training, to improve review design process, to improve how you engage audience, okay? Device, very important, create a business case. Okay, so let's think, I don't know how to start. Well, first, let's think about a use case. Let's create a business case when we can see the return of investment in that business case, the key is, okay, not, we are not only going to think in the first POC we are going to develop. Okay, we have to see if that POC is going to be deployable. Okay, because maybe you invest in a POC and then, hey, I would like to have this in 10 factories. It's not deployable. deployable. Then why have you started with that POC? We have, in the business case, the deployment is a key. Then develop, try. The concept, test the concept to see if everything is okay uh, with the business case you have uh, created, and then when everything goes okay, deploy. Today I bring in here a guest, which is uh, G. Itachi, uh, the big uh, energy company uh, based in the US for the nuclear sector. They have introduced uh, this concept for training proposals. So following the process, first discover, what I have told you before, okay, all the possibilities of the technology, then for training, they have benefits, okay, that's okay. Then, let's see the use case. GE Hitachi Nuclear Energy, world leading provider of advanced reactors and nuclear services, executes a single strategic vision to create a broader portfolio of solutions by expanding its capabilities for nuclear reactor and service opportunities and by offering customers around the world the technological leadership required to effectively enhance reactor performance, power output, and safety. In early 2019, GE Hitachi Alliance with Virtualware, global provider of cutting edge immersive and interactive solutions for training, engineering, and marketing, developed a virtual reality fuel movement simulator to train and requalify operators in nuclear reactors. The fuel movement process is a complex and highly skilled activity that requires top level expertise and training as well as outstanding coordination between the different parties involved during the fuel movement process. The fuel movement simulator consists of an immersive virtual reality room which allows multiple users to collaborate in a refuel floor simulated nuclear environment. By means of a physical replica of the refueling mast, an indispensable tool for carrying out fuel movement operations, users are able to carry out fuel movement operations as if they were doing so in reality. Get ready. The training begins in three, two, one. Those are two guys from the field services department who used to train 
this full uh, movement physically in the physical nuclear reactor. So, the business case, they have to simulate a complex process, fuel movement in a nuclear reactor. It's multi-user and collaborative, I have seen, and I think the main challenge was here, we have to integrate physical equipment. Okay, so as you've seen in the video, you have that physical equipment they use to move the fuel. So when you are in the 3D environment, you catch that virtually and also physically. We are tracking that physical element. The return of investment. You know, in operational expenses, they are reducing like 57%. Mainly, okay, now what they do, they bring all the people, all the workers worldwide to the US. Okay, and now bring in, or, you know, uh, bring in here those in messy room close to where they are, even that, they are reducing their operational expenses. And actually, in terms of investment, imagine that uh, they need to, you know, uh, build a new nuclear reactor, which, which is like, you know, 10 million uh, US dollars and the time that it takes. But with this, you can have unlimited virtual uh, reactors. And in two years, you have that brick, end, brick, uh, brick event sorry, in the investment. And this is, I think, the most important. They are creating a new business. Because now they can not only train their people, because they have you know, the mediums to do that, they can train their subcontractors. So now they have created a new revenue stream that per year can give them 4 million euros. And the most important thing is this is deployable. Okay? Actually, later on, I will tell you more about this. Okay, then the develop part. We had to validate with a technical specialist that as we thought, virtual reality, you know, it's an effective way to train their people. That's the main thing, okay? Uh, if you go to different talks, everybody will say yes, but maybe for you it's a no. Well, let's see if it's possible. Uh, what we have said in the business case is real. Okay, that's the main goal. Second, the challenge, connect that physical equipment, which could be handled in a similar manner. It should be like the same, more or less the same as in real, in that case. And the outcome of everything of this result is that we are okay on that and we can't deploy it. This is the POC. This is the early stage of the project. And this is well, the final stage, showcasing it in an important nuclear event in Europe. So the deploy part, the last part, which is going to be the deploy part, the most important now? Well, we are about, let's see, to sign an agreement with them uh, by the end of this year that includes two fixed immersive rooms, I mean two locations in the US to train the people, one portable immersive room, later on you will see a video about that, Vero software platform and then training different training simulators for different processes. How? Five year agreement. So this is not a one year agreement. This is a five year agreement. Why? The technology is changing. So actually every year we have an amount of money that we can spend to change the new headset, to change the backpacks and whatever. And uh, with the video software platform, we support it and we updated it, they will be able to integrate new devices because in the future, this is not going to be uh, the technology. In the future, maybe with 5G, we don't use backpacks, maybe appears all the kind of tracking technology that is better, but you will need a tool to deploy your content. And when? Hopefully, by the end of this year, this agreement is going to appear in the media. If you are a bit curious about the portable immersive room, well, 
This is how we can make it. This is actually what we did for that uh, nuclear event. Okay, I don't want to change the ceiling panels. I can't do it, whatever. Hey, this is simple and easy. Well, we can create a new infrastructure over there. So this way, the portable one is to bring even more the training to the workers and their customers. So, as a wrap up, what we think is the next breakthrough in virtual reality, that's our approach. We think it's a proper approach as GE Tachi trust us. It's enterprise ready, it's affordable, it's simple, and the most important thing, it's deployable. Thank you. Thank you.